ectropion ectropion as a name as you know that it is outward turning of the eyelid margin everyone knows this outward turning of eyelid margin what can be the cause of this uh, ectropion most common cause of ectropion ectropion is senile old age that is the most common cause senile involutional involutionally senile then ectropion first we'll talk about lower lid okay lower lid ectropion it can be caused if there is a burn of this eyelid skin it will cause the it will cause contraction and cause the eyelid to turn outside that is cicatricial if there is a tumor mass here it will pull the eyelid outwards that is mechanical or if there is a paralysis paralysis orbicularis weakness seventh nerve palsy that will also lead to lower lid ectropion so senile cicatricial paralytic and mechanical these can be the simple four causes senile because of old age cicatricial which is pulling the uh, outside uh, eyelid paralytic because for example seventh nerve palsy orbicularis weakness and mechanical when there is a tumor some tumor mass which is pulling the eyelid down yes congenital congenital can be there congenital ectropion can be there for example now this is rare it is associated with other conditions like one condition i told you when i was teaching you uh, ptosis bpes blepharophimosis epicanthus syndrome also it can be associated with down syndrome also it is associated with small eyes when the patient has uh, small eyes secondary to micro ophthalmos and of thalamus when there is no support eyelid can come out that is secondary so that is rare congenital lower lid ectropion is rare major four causes are senile cicatricial paralytic and mechanical most common cause everyone knows is senile ectropion that is involutional ectropion so when a case of involutional or ectropion comes to you what can you say quickly sir yes it is a case of lower lid or upper lid ectropion like this this is a case of lower lid ectropion and if you tell this word after this diagnosis of ectropion that what is the grade examiner will think that yes this person has studied a simple topic in a detailed manner so what is the grade a very simple grading is there for lower lid ectropion first grade is only the puncta is averted only the puncta of the patient is averted that is grade 1 second you are able to see the palpebral conjunctiva palpebral conjunctiva is visible that is grade 2 and third the fornix is also visible the fornix is also visible that is grade 3 so can't you tell a simple uh, grading for impressing the examiner so this is a case of left lower lid ectropion grade 1 they'll ask you why why next question is why grade 1 you know why is grade 1 because only puncta is averted second you can see the palpebral conjunctiva third if you can see the fornix that is grade 3 so simple next should be grade 1 2 3 very simple next what you can do quickly you can tell sir i would like to do some tests why because involutional ectropion can be because of one horizontal lid laxity if the horizontal eyelid is very lax that can lead to outward turning of eyelid margin they will ask you what test you want to do sir i would like to pinch see this pinch test you pinch the lower eyelid like this this is the pinch test what is the normal value you should know here if you are able if more than 7 to 8 mm you are able to retract from the globe it means the lid is lax and this pinch test you are doing one more test along with this you are pinching and then you are releasing releasing is snap back test you are pinching is a pinch test and when you release that is a snap back test so it's a both test pinch test and snap back test two tests for horizontal lid laxity now snap back test is a failure to snap back 
to normal position now you can if someone wants to learn a little bit more regarding the snapback test i'll just uh, tell snapback can be grade 0 in which which is normal grade 0 is normal when the eyelid returns immediately like i am doing in my it is returning immediately that is grade 0 normal it can be grade 1 it returns in 2 to 3 seconds grade 2 returns in 4 to 5 seconds grade 3 more than 5 second it takes to return to the normal position and grade 4 the eyelid does not return to the position so after giving the grade of the atropian low lid atropian 1 2 3 you can do so i would like to do some tests like a pinch test to know about the horizontal laxity and i am releasing so that is a snapback test i will see how much time it is taking for the eyelid to come back this test is for horizontal laxity because that is one important patho physiology of involution atropion then other test the canthal the medial and the lateral canthal laxity is also to be taken medial canthal laxity and the lateral canthal tendon laxity is also cause of atropion of the uh, old age now test for this is distraction test the test is distraction test for both medial canthus and the lateral canthus laxity what can you do like this see the test you pull like this here you are testing the medial canthal laxity how much is the medial canthal is coming to the lateral side and here you are testing the lateral canthal laxity okay see it again this is for the medial canthal laxity and this is for the lateral canthal laxity this is distraction test okay normal value of the medial canthal laxity only 1 to 2 mm you can take the puncta 1 to 2 mm laterally you can take the puncta if the lid is lax the puncta will reach the limbus and it is very lax it will reach the pupil so severity of this medial canthal laxity you pull the medial canthus laterally 1 to 2 mm is normal if it reaches the limbus or the pupil it means it is very lax similarly goes for lateral tan, uh, canthal tendon laxity 1 to 2 mm is normal and if you take the lateral canthus medially like this if it is more than 2 mm it means the lateral canthal is lax so can't you do this simple test so three tests i would like to do for lower lid atropion to see the horizontal laxity for the lateral canthal lax, uh, laxity and the medial canthal laxity for horizontal laxity i will do a pinch test and a snap back test and i will do distraction test for the medial canthus and the lateral canthus laxity and if you want to remember i have told you the grade also of snapback test and normal values of the distraction test all right okay some other test can also be done in cases of atropion so for example in atropion you will also like to uh, know about the orbicularis so other test can be some orbicularis test like seven the palsy you have to check the orbicularis you have to see whether the patient has lack of thalamus so you have to check the cornea and conjunctiva also so some other quick test uh, tarsal plate atrophy is also one of the cause so tarsal plate height conjunctiva cicatricial changes are there or not on cornea if there is lack of thalamus in seven the palsy you have to stain the cornea and see so these are some other tests but if you mention the first three tests which i have told these are more important in a senile atropion but of course you have to check the orbicularis tarsal height cornea staining conjunctiva uh, changes cicatricial change to rule out the other causes of atropion also theek okay. hai after this let us go to management <clears throat> how do you manage a senile lower lid atropion so senile management is uh, the most important but i'll tell you others also so senile atropion management will depend on whether it's a generalized atropion all the entire lower lid is uh, outward turning or only the medial part of the eyelid is coming out so if it is generalized we have to see it is with without excess skin with excess skin or with associate with the lateral tendon laxity which we have already done the test so different names of the test and different techniques are 
uh, required. If you just remember the names here and why it is done, it is more than enough. So let us see. And medial also, you have to see it is without horizontal laxity, with horizontal laxity, or with medial canthal laxity. So this is you can write like this. Let us see one by one. Let us see first. If it is a generalized ectropion and there is no excess skin in the lower eyelid, what you can do is, for example, here. There is no excess skin, so you can take a pentagon excision. You can do a pentagon excision and you join both of them. This will make the horizontal laxity less. This is known as a pentagon excision horizontal lid shortening. For generalized without skin, pentagon excision is done. That is for horizontal lid laxity. Along with this, if there is an excess of skin, and there is skin extra also, which is also causing the eyelid to come out, so take out the part of skin also. But the name of the procedure will change. <clears throat> Pentagon excision is done, but the skin excess skin is also taken out. The procedure is. By the name of scientist Kuhn Shimnovsky procedure. ये हम पढ़ते थे ना खुराना में लिखा रहता था. ये मतलब है. When there is an excess skin along with the pentagon, you take out the excess skin. That is Kuhn Shimnovsky procedure. That is one step ahead of pentagon excision. And when there is a lateral canthal laxity by the test distraction test, you have found out that there is a generalized ectropion with lateral canthal laxity. What you can do is now this procedure. Sometimes they can ask. This is the lateral tarsal strip procedure. I'll just give you some quick points regarding this lateral tarsal strip procedure. Okay, for example, this is the left eyelid, and the lateral canthal tendon are like this. There are limbs like this, which forms a common limb like this. So what you can do is remember this point. First, you cut. But you cut this common limb. This is known as canthotomy. Okay, this is canthotomy. Second, only this is left now. You cut the lower limb, lower uh, this limb. That is known as cantholysis. Remember these two terms. It will come later on also. Cantholysis. Canthotomy is cutting the common limb. Cantholysis is cutting the lower limb or the upper limb. Cantholysis. Here we have lower lid atrophion, so we are cutting the lower limb. Then the lamella, anterior and posterior lamella, are divided. then strip of lateral tarsus see the picture also simultaneously strip of lateral tarsus is dissected out you have to make the skin taut so a strip of lateral is dissected out lateral tarsus is dissected out which is now sutured to the orbital rim tight ho jayega na isse it will make tight sutured to the orbital rib and then the canthotomy is closed this will make the, the decrease the laxity of the lateral canth this is known as lateral tarsal strip procedure stripping the lat word stripping the lateral tarsus to make the horizontal eyelid tight by making the lateral canthal tight that is lateral tarsal strip procedure right so that is a generalized lower lid ectropion when there is a medial ectropion without any horizontal laxity only medial ectropion is there like you see in this picture only the medial part of the eyelid is having is coming out here you can do a medial conjunctivoplasty just remember the name that is more than enough 
you give an incision in the medial conjunctiva and you just tight it so that the medial half is going inside that is medial conjunctivo plasty and if there is a horizontal relaxity can someone tell can think if there is a medial ectropion with horizontal relaxity what you can do think apply your mind you have done this already there is horizontal relaxity also and there is a medial ectropion how do you treat the horizontal relaxity pentagon excision so you combine the pentagon excision with medial conjunctivoplasty join kar dena this is pentagon excision with medial conjunctivoplasty that is given by the name lazy t procedure virens with lazy t procedure which is pentagon why pentagon pentagon will take care of the horizontal relaxity plus medial conjunctivoplasty will take care of the medial ectropia So step by step, if you remember, it will be easy. That is lazy T procedure. Even if you say lazy T, that is more than enough. <clears throat> and then if there is a only medial canthal laxity, medial canthal is laxity. Similarly to la lateral tarsal strip, a similar procedure for the medial laxity is done. That is medial canthal resection to make the medial canthal tight. That is similar to the procedure lateral lateral tarsal strip for the lateral canthal laxity. Itna hi jaan hai. This is more than enough. This is more than enough for lower lid ectropia. That is more than enough for lower lid ectropia. ठीक है सिनाइल. That was सिनाइल. Now, quick quick points for cicatricial and paralytic and mechanical. Mechanical to treat the basic cause. You have to treat the basic. You have to take out the tumor for mechanical. Cicatricial, because cicatricial when something is pulling out because of burns or some chemical injuries, which is pulling it out. So here in cicatricial, this is you have to excise the scar tissue and Z plasty is done. This is just to be remembered. And skin grafting for severe. Skin grafting or flaps for severe ones, but mainly for ectropion senile. If you remember, is more than enough. I'm just giving you some extra point for cicatricial, for mild Z plasty, for severe skin grafting is done. For burns, you can do skin grafting and flaps. While paralytic, paralytic because of some in the palsy. Now some points they will ask you what are the other features. in a paralytic ectropion what are the associated features of paralytic ectropion and what can you do for this paralytic with this seven up palsy there extra features are patient is not able to close orbicularis will not work so patient will have retraction of the upper eyelid the brotosis frontalis will also not work so there is brotosis lack of thalamus patient is not able to close the eyes so cornea staining will be there and lacrimal pump mechanism because orbicularis is forming the lacrimal pump so there is more watering as well so these are extra extra features in paralytic patient is not able to close the eyes this we discussed previously in the orbicularis so you mechanically close the eyes you can do what temporary tarsography and if you are suspecting that the patient is uh, the uh, seventh of will take a lot of time you can do a permanent tarsography as well ठीक है, so treatment is of course till the time patient is having lack of thermos, you can patch or you can do temporary tarsography. Topical lubricants that is medical management is given. Topical lubrication is given. Sometimes you can give botulinum toxin and temporary tarsography can be given. This is for temporary solution of the seventh of uh, palsy, paralytic ectropia. well if you are thinking that the facial palsy is irreversible or it will take more than 6 months to recover back you will do either you will go do permanent tarsography or you can do a medial canthoplasty now this word i want you to know that what does it mean medial canthoplasty you have to close the eyes that is your main aim no you have to close the eyes but you can't close the eyes permanently so medial canthoplasty means the medial canthan tendon you can see here medial canthan also has this tendon like this you join the two limbs the suture the two limbs so that it is working like a tarsography that is known as medial canthoplasty you suture the 
two limbs of the medial canthus so that the eyes are closed from the medial side which is like a temporary or uh, which is like a tarsography lateral this is a medial sort of medial tarsography similarly you can do a lateral tarsography which i explained last time okay so temporary and permanent solution for seminal palsy are possible and mechanical ectropion you know already mechanical ectropion you have to take out the underlying cause when there is a mass you have to take out the mass and reconstruct the eyelid which i'll tell later on so this is for the lower lid <coughs> ectropion upper lid ectropion is a very rare thing अपर लेड एक्ट्रोपियन तो आपने देखा अभी कम ही होगा सो इट इज अ रेयर थिंग बट स्टिल इफ आई जस्ट क्विकली टेल यू इट कैन बी कंजेनाइटल इट कैन बी एक्वायर्ड ठीक है कंजेनाइटल कैन बी रेयर रिवर्जन दे कैन बी रेयर रिवर्जन ऑफ द अपर आईलेट well acquired what they want you to ask is floppy eyelid syndrome some people have their floppy eyelids while sleeping their eyelids can evert like this floppy eyelid syndrome or they can be cicatricial like if there is a if there is a chemical burn of the upper eyelid it will retract the upper eyelid upwards okay so it gets cicatricial due to burns and chemical injuries but as i told you it is very rare just remember floppy eyelid syndrome that is what they want for upper eyelid atrophy 